Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Talk It Talks. It's a series of sharing sessions where small but mighty businesses owners share about their motivation on how they start their business and the story behind their journey. My name is Cindy and I'll be your host today. This sharing session is brought to you by RISE, a program that equips young people with entrepreneurship skills and knowledge to start their own business. And RISE is supported by City Foundation. We believe that entrepreneurship is not only for the bigger companies and companies that have high technology, but also small businesses, but thriving businesses such as MTMT Designs and Studios. And, and with times such as like the MCO and 2020 being a tough time for everybody, we want to showcase how these businesses are actually striving to continue their dreams and also to strive to continue their business as well. So without further ado, I'm so happy to welcome our guest today, Maggie from MTMT Designs and Studios. Ooh. Welcome, Maggie. Retro applause, people. Okay, hi. <laughs> very, very nice to be here. It's a pleasure to be here online as well. I've seen quite a number of um, entrepreneurs being interviewed as well, and I'm also very surprised that you be here. So thank you so much for having me, and yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you for coming. We are honored to have you here today. <laughs> right. Okay, before we start for the main session, let's go through the agenda first. Okay, so next we're going, we're going to move on to our sharing session where I'll be asking uh, Maggie a few questions regarding her background, her business, and how she's doing right now in terms of um, and, and her business-wise. And next, we'll move on to our Q&A session, which we will be answering your questions. So your pre the questions or the questions that you might have. So please leave it down in the chat box below. And then after that, we'll end off the whole entire session with a short promotion about Rise Online 2020, which is our new free online entrepreneurship program. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. Okay. Okay, so Maggie, can you share a bit about your business or who you are? Um, like how do people find out about you, the services you offer? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, in a very summarized term, uh, or people also like to re relate me to, I am a shoe painter or a more fancy name would be shoe magician. And then I also am the studio owner of MTMT Studios. So I initially started off um, shoe painting during my university days. Um, so it was something part-time that I like to do. It was, uh, it was a place where I try and seek, um, you know, like how you want to de-stress from studies and stuff. And then right. you eventually want to find something to do. So that's where I started off painting. Because I did art when I was younger, like probably mm -hmm. in primary days, but then I didn't do anything uh, in, in between. Then eventually during uni days, I wanted to take it back again. So that's uh, like, then one particular day, a friend's birthday happened and she's a big fan of Spongebob. So mm -hmm. I decided to give her a gift. And then, um, you know, like how Spongebob has so many merchandises at the art, at the right. toy store and stuff. And I wanted to give something very memorable and different. So that's where I decided to paint a pair of Spongebob shoes for her. And I just put it online. So then requests started flooding in because I didn't know that there was a lot of interest in that. And I started to take orders from friends and family. And eventually I registered a business out of it. So it was an accidental surprise. Like I didn't actually plan it to be a business, but it became a business eventually. It was a hobby business because I was actually working in uh, other industries. To be frank, it was about seven different industries throughout a span of like probably five years. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to equip myself with different skill sets because it's, a, it's quite a different range of industry. I, I was formerly in insurance, banking, fashion and beauty magazine, F&B, um, what else? Uh, beauty, and then what, there's another two more, I kind of like forget. Oh yeah, uh, sales for digital marketing. And then another one is somehow, I think sales related as well. So it's quite a diverse platform and it was all true out of this experiences that I gained that I decided that, you know what, one day I really wanted to try out having my own empire. And yeah. I kept thinking about, you know, how I am doing my shoe business stuff. 
But I know for sure this shoe business is not scalable because it's just a one-man show business. And then I decided to think further. You know, like how when you are a teacher, you can have a group of students. And that's right. where I think, you know what, maybe I should start teaching my skill set. And then it can also be a revenue stream for myself. So probably around 2018 that I decided to quit my jobs. They were actually quite high paying. Like in a sense, I was actually working for three jobs at the same time. Like a full-time business, oh. part-time business, and then a freelance, which is my art thing. So I, I, had, a, like, I had like a mental breakdown back then because I was, I was, comfortably with, my, I was com- comfortable with my finances, but I wasn't comfortable with my mental health. Like I'm not saying that I'm depressed or stuff, but I just had uh, close, close experiences of anxiety attacks. And, um, and I was also like uh, caught into situations where I got into car accidents because I was too tired. So I went into about two to three accidents in that particular year, I think. Because oh. <laughs> I, I was sleep driving. I was sleep driving. Oh, so okay. it, was quite, it was quite detrimental to my health. So I decided, you know what? Maybe I should do something myself. And then mm. that's when I decided to quit my... Or fire the bosses, okay? And then I wanted to be my own boss and try things <laughs> out. Because you know, like how sometimes you were not satisfied with how certain bosses do their stuff and you're like, why are right. they doing this? Why are they doing that? You, you would say that certain things you can do it better and stuff. So I wanted to prove to, to myself that I can really do things better than all mm. of these bosses who think that they are better in that sense. Like, okay? It's not like I'm trying to prove to them that they, they, they are not capable and stuff. I'm just saying like, you know what? Maybe it's something that I should try it out. So at least before I turn 30, because I'm close to 30 right now. Okay, don't ask me to reveal my age. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm close to 30 and I wanted to make sure that I am able to achieve something uh, before I you know, go into my coffin and feel regret one day in life. So that is how I started uh, my studios uh, probably at the beginning of 2019. And then it sort of turned out to be something progressively ongoing at this point. And of course, because being in the art industry is one of the most challenging industry, especially mm-hmm. in a country that doesn't appreciate art, mm-hmm. I am trying to, I'm trying to find trouble to myself. Like for instance, um, even for art bazaars, my mm-hmm. shoe is like people will pass by and say, oh, that's really beautiful. But they will never ask how much is it and they will never want to buy it. My target mm-hmm. audience or my customers so far are people from all over the world, except for Malaysia. <laughs> maybe oh. like, maybe to, to actually put it into a percentage, for overseas audience, it takes about 90%. And then for mm. local audience, probably about 10%. That will purchase mm-hmm. that would purchase my my products, but mm-hmm. for my art classes, um, so far people are starting to populate the classes because post MCO things were a bit slow, but it's starting to come mm-hmm. back into the the stability right now, lah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's right. a, a very long story. I, I thought I said I want to summarize it, but yeah, it's... <laughs> it's okay. That was, that was very informational. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's pretty much the, the journey from mm. my end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So could you share a bit about like um, your background? Like you talk about you work into different industries. Did you ever yeah. study art or was it just a skill that you have honed over the years? Okay, so to be very frank, I am actually a business grad, uh, mm. but, I did, uh, but I did went through art education when I was a kid, probably around my mm. primary school and high school days. They weren't right. like the fine art style of um, classes, but they were the kinds where, you know, like my mom is here, right? Okay, so you know last time when we have art competitions, and mm. then these art studios are the ones that will make sure you win the competition. So, for example, you were, you were, you were expecting a competition to happen probably in October. And then you go to the class and say, teacher, I want to, uh, this is the title of the competition. Then the teacher will give you something to keep on practicing. Maybe it's like a, 
uh, a trip to the zoo. Then you just draw mm. the zoo picture 10,000 times, memorize it in your brain, then go to the competition hall and then you draw everything out exactly the same. So it was a very, it was a very systematic and uh, very, very Malaysian way of teaching, I'd say. It's not like, it's not like they will instill creativity in you and say mm. like, okay, if your frog is orange color, it's okay. It's perfect. That is your way of interpreting a frog. But in Malaysia, probably most of the art school, they will tell you the frog is green color. Then they will tell you the strawberry is red color. For mm. any... Any part of time, if you draw something that is out of the color that it's um, that that is mentioned by the society, right? Then the teacher will say it's wrong. But it shouldn't mm. be the way things are being expressed because a jungle right. can be red, a jungle can be blue. It depends on mm. how this individual sees it. So I wasn't taught in that way, and I actually learned about all these different perspectives mm. along the way. I I practically self taught myself. Uh, throughout my journey after mm. my my school days like, technically so mm-hmm. what happened is that I do a lot of uh, external research myself and I also uh, work on different different mediums and mm. that's where I decided like you know what I think uh, shoe is definitely the medium that I really love working on so mm. you know, and also shoes because they have different kinds of materials like you have leather you have sweat materials you have mm. um, canvas and then you also have like uh, high heels that kind of like velcro material so it's like very um, it's very versatile as well and you have to make sure that you are very up to the up to the game you're always right. ahead of the customer in terms mm. of predicting the questions that they will ask because most of the time mm. that the questions they ask me I already have it in my mind and I'm like yes I already know the solution mm. so yeah Mm, okay. Right. Great. Okay. Um, thinking about your business, like yeah. from like, because you talk about how you learn everything from scratch, mm-hmm. and you slowly learn as you go bigger and bigger. Can right. you share a little bit about the challenges you faced when you first started, and how maybe you overcome them, and okay. you know, as an Indian, as a business owner. All right. So, uh, although I said I'm a business grad, right? So yeah. most of the thing. Most of the thing that's taught in business school is not really applicable to my existing business because mm-hmm. the businesses that is being used for case studies were kind of like MNC companies right. or even uh, big corporates where they do international trades and stuff because uh, mm-hmm. they speak from a very a very grand perspective and mm-hmm. not a lot on how do you build everything from scratch by yourself. So I'm very grateful that my mom is also an entrepreneur herself. She is a beautician Mm -hmm. and she has quite a great track record when she was around my age. So a lot of times I always ask her questions like, hey, how do I work on this kind of finances and how do I kickstart Mm -hmm. things like that? And also because I was also very fortunate to be selected as part of a National Art Galleries program, Young Art Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Uh, They do have uh, the fundamentals on how to actually work out how uh, how to actually work out and manage an art an art business art based business because it's uh, it's what we call it as entrepreneurship if you have heard mm. of this term before because entrepreneurship is probably the generic term but if you're in the art business and you're an entrepreneur as well this is like entrepreneurship so um yeah, it's very unrelatable, whatever it's taught in uni. So a lot of things I have to really jump into the sea myself and learn how to swim. For instance, uh, how businesses need to have a current account. And it's actually very important. You, when you don't have a current account, it will not be able to let you apply for a loan, buy a car, buy a house in future. Let's say if you're self-employed. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you are a salaried worker and you are taking the salary from your company to your personal account is fine. But if you're mm. if you're a business owner, you really need a current account. And how are the things that you should be able to predict? And is partnership uh, is partnership actually necessary in a business? Because right. most of the partnerships that we know, that I know technically, they always fail. And I insisted oh. on not making my business into a partnership because I can only uh, I want to be the 
I want to make sure the, the business will run, you know. I mean, there are mm. many people who wanted to partner with me, but I said, what is a value proposition except for giving me money? Because mm. there are people who want to invest, but there are also people who are, are looking at the, you know, just dumping money in and then making me do all the work. So what's the whole point? You know what I mean? Right. So we have to really mm. think from a lot of angles. It's like thinking of the future. If let's say you work with these kind of people, what kind of uh, outcome is it going to lead yourself to? And of course, uh, you're talking about challenges, right? Mm. There were definitely financial challenges, I'd say, because mm. as compared to a salaried worker, you are constantly trying to find out ways how to earn money on right. a day-to-day, month-to-month basis. Even mm. sometimes I will have the tendency to say like, you know what, am I doing this right? Is it the time for me to give up right now? There were many, many times that I actually thought of that. But it was because I know that it will still work out. I just wanted to dig my head in deeper. And I gave myself a timeline. So within this particular timeline, if it doesn't work, then I will say sayonara. But so far, myself, from this point until the timeline that I given to myself, I still have some... I still have some buffer period. Lah. That's why mm. I will need to uh, make sure that it works out. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy really. Honestly, uh, right. you, you can ask the friends around me how many times I say I wanted to give up. How many times I said like, you know what, this is not really working out. And like, why am I doing something so, so challenging? And then why am I not taking the easy way? So it's constantly a battle that I'm asking uh, myself, but eventually I think if I were to persist longer and then make through right. the hardships, I will be able to get through it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. is it like, because in the, I know that there's a lot of like art studios coming out right now and yeah. before, even, even before MCO, there was a lot of art studios. Was it hard in the beginning to like find customers and like try to gain clients like trust in like investing in your your product or like buying your art if i say if i say it's not hard i'm definitely lying to you lah right because these are these are what people will say that they are competitors but honestly i don't see them as competitors i somehow see them as um like a like a like a demand increase of demand because it shows that my industry is working and people mm. are constantly getting revenues. So, of course, they have their own way of doing it. I have my own way of doing it. And I don't see them as competitors, technically. I see them as just another service provider. Like how hotels, mm. they have so many hotels. Why would you choose one hotel over the other? And if I am an art studio, why would you come to mine instead of theirs? So, mine is constantly uh, pushing more on creativity. I, my studio is focused more on creative installation uh, creative mm-hmm. learning and also creative expression so I understand that you know I I may have offered something that may sound very similar but the, mm-hmm. the way I conduct the classes is something that they cannot replicate from my end because I am me the studio is named after me as well <laughs> so they can't <laughs> replicate me <laughs> right they, they could potentially replicate the system the structure the syllabus but they cannot replicate another MTMT into their right. their, mm. their business lah. so if people are coming to my place I'm pretty sure it's because of me as a person and the way the culture is being mm. set here because mm. um there are a lot of ways to go, go through because this one could be a very huge debate, I'd say, and a very mm-hmm. huge discuss- discussion as well. So I'm just going to put it around this and then uh, around at this point <laughs> instead mm-hmm. of like making it too long and people will be like, oh my God, Smaggy is talking too much now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So having more competitors is a good sign for you. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Mm. Are you hopeful for your like in terms of because you're talking about last like your business is like ninety percent international and ten percent local. Are you hopeful that it will grow in the future or do you see it growing? Um, with all right. the art scene like growing right now. Okay, I, I'm actually very, very hopeful because um the people from the National Art Gallery are also very supportive and technically um not only the National Art Gallery people are 
getting more traction and getting more support from uh, organizations like um, Kanchana or even like uh, Yayasan. So they are constantly getting funds from this organization to actually support the art industry, be it from uh, fine art, performing art, uh, and etc. Because it's actually a sector of the Malaysian culture that we should really cultivate and you know, like somehow cherish as well. Because these days, people are constantly on social media. No one is actually using their brains anymore. They are consuming, but they're not producing. And we need more producers. We need more creators to make Malaysia, Malaysia again. You know what I mean? It's like mm. we are starting to lose out on the, on the creative culture from this whole world. And we really need to make sure that this industry is continuous as opposed mm. to, you know, like how I, when AR uh, and when AI comes in, industrial revolution comes in, some humans will be replaced by robots, but robots mm. cannot do one thing, which is being creative. They cannot come up right. with something that is like, you can literally just invent something. Robots cannot do that. Robots can only replicate the whole procedure according to mm. what is being um, pro pro pre-programmed into their system already. So okay. we need people who are constantly able to create, to produce, mm. to, to, to just invent, like, you know? Not just about art, not just about, um, not just about like, things that we see, like you know, fine art girl mm. or like, from pain mediums and stuff. It, it goes beyond that. For example, you can also create videos. You can also create like new programs. You can also create like, you know, new mobile apps and stuff that would technically be beneficial to the society or even to the mass audience, mm. something like that. So we cannot, we cannot mm. lose creativity. It's, a, it's an industry that we should, you know, place more focus in. I think the government sees this, uh, this downfall and they're also trying to push this as well. So I am pretty hopeful, to be frank. And right. for whoever that's listening, right, if you think that um, you have no talent in art and stuff, actually, whatever that you're surrounded by, whatever that you're surrounded uh, uh, around your environment, I'd say, it's all a creation of art. Even things as simple as a remote controller, why is it mm -hmm. this shape? Why is it like in this kind of like format? Like how your water bottles how your shoes are designed, they are also part of art because people need to sketch it from, mm. from something and then they will need mm. to R&D and then they produce it. So only you will like to buy it. So don't look down on art. Actually, art is very vital and very important in your life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing. So speak, speaking about like art and creativity, so I feel like I want to slip in one audience question right here because I feel like it's very okay. appropriate. So right. how do you make sure that your artistic creativity is still shown mm. while being prof profitable? So because the audience said, because to sell art, maybe customer mm. wants something more commercial rather than right. something that's more personal. So how do you balance between creativity and also making a profit out of creativity? Okay, so um, I am not in the position to tell you that I'm an artist right now. I am more of a mm. designer than an artist. So speaking from a designer's perspective, because I am only doing things that my customers want me to. So for example, if they tell me they want a shoe that is designed in this way, I follow their instruction. Of course, mm. I will have my own artistic uh, uh, design towards it. Like how I design the shoe, that is the only way that I can see how I can implement the personal style into it. Mm -hmm. And speaking of personal artistic style on a different level. So it is not something that I have it very strongly in my, in my blood mm. right now. I have to be frank with you because right now my concern is to scale my art studio. I wanted mm. it to be more stabilized before I can focus on being a creator to constantly create something that would speak from my, for myself. So uh, I, I do know that a lot of artists with their own personal um, style is mm. actually struggling to market themselves and also struggling mm. to get people to like their work. Reason being because mm. it's, not, it's not something that 
the mass audience is accepting it. Like for example, you can tell me that this, this particular design is one of your best work, but then it might not be the best to a lot of people. Okay, so you have to really try and see what, what would speak to the audience. I'm not trying to ask you to change your personal style. You can always retain your personal style. But the thing is, mm-hmm. is it okay for you to collaborate and implement certain things that people like into your personal style, which would make it more sellable in that sense? So mm-hmm. it might be a debate between yourself, whether is it okay that you are going against your personal style or is it okay that you persist on doing your personal style, but there is no revenue stream for it. So mm. it's a question that I would want to throw it back to the creator, he or herself, like, because I've seen quite a number of people uh, mm. doing really great work, but they are not profiting from the work that they are doing. Because reason being, they are egoistic. They think that they are the best in the world. Right. When there isn't, a mass audience that's actually agreeing to the artistic style that they are mm. pursuing. So this is a question that is probably going to get a lot of critics because I know mm. I'm in the art industry, but I am also having the self-awareness that I am not the best with my own personal style. So I would say it's a question that you want to constantly ask back yourself if you're okay mm. with going against the mainstream way of or the non-mainstream way is it vital for you mm. to to have your to have your money and food on the table or is it more important for you to bring your artistic personal style to the world yeah so mm. it can be a balance of both you can always do commercial art and you can do your art at the same time and then you can constantly do a tweak of like uh, styles to actually show people your capability of doing different things so this is first right, right. advice my Anna because I know a lot of fine artists they cannot market themselves well and they are just like mm. yeah I mean it's a bit sad when I see them but if they are very mm. headstrong with their ego I'm sorry maybe that's not really the way that you can progress with life like, because if you're not getting money on the table who's going to pay you for that you know what I mean even if it's right. worth 10,000 bucks for the thing that you say is the best art in the world who's going to mm. pay for it you know what I mean yeah. right Right. right. Wow, that's really good that, advice for artists. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope it actually answered the question because um okay. if it doesn't, please let me know so I'll be able mm. to see if there are any other examples that I can answer that to you. Okay, great. So let's move on. Um, mm. what are the challenges that your business is currently facing? And like could you share how are you going to solve this problem or are you still struggling with that problem? Okay, just yeah. share a bit. At present, I would say financial state. Uh, of course, I think during MCO, it was the breaking point for me where I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what, I think I should give up right now. But no, uh, I somehow persisted. And I also pivoted in selling DIY kits for people mm-hmm. uh, during the lockdown. Because, you know, when you're, during, when you're locked down in the, at home, you mm-hmm. probably need to... You probably need to find out ways how you can get money as well. So, right. and then I have a lot of ready stocks in the studio. So I need to get it out and sell to just get some cash flow. And uh, I also need to find out different ways to, to market the school or the studio. Because I threw in, you know, like how Air Asia they threw in a 499 unlimited promo. Right. Uh, I also did that. <laughs> but mine was super duper, uh, it was super duper good price. Like. It was like mm. $299 for a whole year of painting class. We were expecting oh. quite a number of people to join and then eventually towards a certain number, we just have to cut. So mm. at this point, um, things were slowly getting back on track. Of course, recruitment of students is always going to be a hassle um, mm. because our structure at this point is still like one-off kind of like business model. So we are slowly trying to implement uh, a monthly painting schedule or like a monthly subscription from students to actually come back more often. And then uh, that would make the financial state of the studio much better. So we are also partnering with a few other platforms Mm. and then 
the more things are being shout out and we are hopeful that uh, the student numbers would also increase. Lah. So this is pretty much um, what we are looking into right now. Mm. Yeah. And um, if you're talking about things, what, I'm not, what am I doing to solve the issue, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, mainly re-strategizing uh, mm. how to market the business and also mm. hiring the right people to actually work together to get the marketing message out. Because right now, I'm intending to uh, pay or, or actually hire a social media person and also a digital mm. marketer for the, for the marketing side of things. Because I cannot manage everything. It used to be all by myself. And right. when I do it all by myself, actually, it's kind of like a, when, when it fails, everything will just go down the, the drain. So mm. when I get a few other people on board to actually help me with it, I think things would turn out to be better in the next few months. Mm. Yeah. Great, great to hear that, that everything's gonna be okay with your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope everybody can like really learn from that as well. Um meaning mm. because like a uh, different business like you said earlier, different business, especially the art business, requires different type of business um approach and business solution. Right. So as a young um entrepreneur, would mm. you do you would you like suggest other young people to be an entrepreneur themselves? Yes, um, why? I guess no, why? There's no harm in trying out. Why, why would I say no? <laughs> of course, everyone wants to get like extra money, right? But uh, I would strongly advise that you start something while you are working. Mm -hmm. Because if you were to give up your job and start something, you are probably going to struggle so much that you are just going to give up and then you go back mm -hmm. to the workforce. So I'd say... If you're working and you have a salaried job right now, maybe spend mm. some time over the weekend or maybe a few hours a day to potentially build something. Like it could just be reselling an item or maybe create something that is, uh, you know, it might be uh, something that would save time or even things that would benefit people. It can be as little as, you know, selling bra hangers. You know what I mean? Like, you know, hangers that you hang, like, you know, when you want, for, for ladies, like, okay, I'm just going to say, mm. sorry, there's a guy here. Uh, okay, so, for example, do you know that when we hang bras, we have to hang it upside down and we have to clip it instead of, you know, hanging it like we fold it like that. So, mm. if you can invent a bra where you have clippers onto the hanger, it could be one way of marketing it. So, you can say ways mm. like uh, you should do it in a way so that you won't have your bra out of shape. You can actually make it longer lasting, the ETC. La. So it can be something mm. so good to the household. It might be something mini, but it helps people mm. to get certain things done. La. Right. Mm. Yeah, it's a good idea, right? I think it's a bra hanger thing. So you should, <laughs> you should keep it. And then you probably can credit me in the future and say, thank you, Maggie, for giving me this idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, mm. there's, so many other, there's so many other crazy business ideas because I have a lot of business ideas, but I can't execute them all by myself. I mean, right. if you want me to work it out, I can just come up with something out of the blue and say like, hey, would you like to buy painted wine bottles because I have some painted wine bottles and mm -hmm. oh yeah I actually did painted some wine bottles and mm -hmm. it was being mentioned as a joke for my audience let me just show you hang on a sec okay so um, mm -hmm. previously I had some because I have a uh, tipsy painting classes where people paint and have wine at the same time so I have a lot of wine bottles right. in the studio so I came up with a brilliant idea of painting the wine bottle and then I did a uh, painting and decoupage. Decoupage is a method of like, you know, putting some, some prints on it. So let me introduce you what I call it as the cock bottle. Why is it a cock bottle? Okay, let me give you a business pitch right now. If you have a friend that is very cocky or talks a lot of cock and you want to try and subtly tell them that they are very cocky or they are talking too much cock, buy this bottle and give it to them. For only $9.99, you can get a bottle for your friend's birthday, Christmas, 
or even anniversary, or maybe just telling them that you're too cocky or you talk too much cock. I just want to give it to you. So happy friendship day. <laughs> yeah, actually this worked, you know, I mean, I, mm. I was just mentioning on my Insta, sto- Insta stories and I managed to, mm. I created three bottles. I managed to sell two of them. I have one bottle left. Does anybody here wants to buy my cock bottle? It's only for 10 ringgit. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just like a weird mm-hmm. idea that I get and I I could have potentially created more. Like, so if I'm just mm-hmm. being busy and I have too much time, <laughs> I would just... Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, great. So that's all the questions. Yeah, I got going. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, th- I would say definitely try being, uh, try doing something. Try, mm-hmm. try selling something. You you have to always constantly test your own uh, capability on how to sell mm-hmm. a product, and then you will know okay if this thing works for you. If the cock bottles don't work, maybe you sell bit vodka bottles. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's just like pivoting and pivoting and trying and trying. So mm-hmm. I won't say no. Keep on going. Keep doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, great. That was a very didn't expect that to be coming, but great. <laughs> yeah, okay. it was just. <laughs> I'm sorry. I never knew such thing existed, but great that I know now. <laughs> That's all the questions yeah. I have for you. But I right. guess you've answered some of the audience question already. So we have one right. last question from the audience. Okay. So the audience asked you, because you talked about how you have reached a point in time in your business when you feel like you want to give up and right. like you don't want to go on anymore. But the question to you is like, how do you stay motivated and what actually keeps you motivated to follow your dreams and never give up on your passion? Um, okay, I don't like to put this out, but because uh, you know like how I get publicities from uh, newspapers, from mm. n- news medias, and because they actually left the mark, I actually left the mark on these publications already. And I didn't want it to be like temporary, like say maybe they just uh, reviewed or maybe they just featured me in February. Then all of a sudden, I just gave up my business, which doesn't make sense to me. I felt like I'm actually somehow relate, uh, uh, you know, I, ha- I have the duty and responsibility to actually make sure that the business would actually survive for at least a few years before I call it quits. Because mm. I gave myself a timeline for about three years to actually make this work. And right now, it's just like halfway through and I can't just say I'm going to give up right now. Maybe on the third year, if things really didn't work out as expected, then I have mm. the valid reason to actually say, okay, you know what? Maybe it's not working out. So how mm. about I'm just going to call it quits and then try out something new? Because this has been a dream of mine um, since a very young age. You know, I, I had a dream when I was younger. Uh, so for, for this segment, Tipsy Painting in my studio, it's an inspiration that I get when I had a dream around... I think I was only like 18 or 19 back then. So I woke up, I have this amazing idea that I want people to be tipsy while they paint. You know, like how a lot of people are saying that, hey, I'm not talented for this. Hey, I can't paint for shit. I can't, I can't do all this. I'm just like, you know, when I take the pen, I can't even draw a stick man properly, that kind of thing. So I want mm-hmm. them to be tipsy and I want them to actually have all those barriers out of their mindset. And then they will be very jolly and happy to, to paint on it. So this is very, very, very close to my vision. And I, I'm very happy when I see all the students enjoying themselves. So it's mm-hmm. part of like, it's part of like my motto to actually create my, platform as well i want people to be happy it's like a creative playground like you go to a kid's playground you have the slide you have the seesaw you have the swing and stuff so for me my playground here i have painting classes i have craft classes i have uh, all these other ways of uh, creating art so this is a playground where i want people to come to when they feel um, that they want to do something over the weekend or if they are in a not in the right state of mind they wanted to release themselves they can always come here so it's always an open door any time of the day if you feel like coming just let us know and we are going to be here for you it can be a therapy it can be like just a friend that you want to speak to yeah so 
it's a place where it's very welcoming. There is no age limit so far. We are mm. accepting kids to adults. Our oldest is about 83 years old, our student. Wow. Yeah, so there is no limit and it shouldn't be uh, a, an obstacle for the person to say that, hey, I don't have this talent, I can't do it. So they're just going to give up and not try it. So mm. yeah, I'm just, in a way, I, I believe that there's talent in everybody. It's just mm. whether you want to practice it or not. Yeah. Right. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Thank right. you so much for your insight, Maggie. So everyone, no that was Maggie from NCMP Design and Studios. So if you're interested in her art class or if you're interested in <laughs> any of her products that she might be selling, so right. please go and, and find out more through her social media handles and like book a class with her. Maybe you're interested yeah. in the uh, or maybe painting, go and yeah, book a class. come and see me. <laughs> yeah. By the way, today have a conversation with her. Please go and find her. Yeah, okay. yeah. Anyways, um, today I sort of like came very overdressed, but I hope it's not scary to most of you, <laughs> because I had a makeup session this whole day. Um, so you're seeing me very oriental. Yeah. Um, I hope it's an uh, inspiration to you guys to also be. Uh, cultivating the culture in, in Malaysia. If you one day, mm. oh yeah, uh, Merdeka is coming. So I'm actually representing the Chinese Chinese tribe to be a Malaysian. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this session and actually at least learned something apart from my cock bottle. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me today. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Uh, I'll be more than happy to speak to you and I hope to see any every one of you in person one day as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much Maggie for sharing. So that was Maggie everyone sharing her experience at Talkie Talks brought yeah. to you by Rise and supported by City Foundation. Ooh. So what really motivated Maggie was her love for art ever since right. she was young and her, her love to share creativity. So what I take what my what, what was my biggest takeaway from this whole entire session is that in entrepreneurship, there's always there's always room for creativity and creativity actually funds entrepreneurship. So I hope all of you actually learn something and from her, her little nugget of wisdom and you can bring forward in your journey as a person or as an entrepreneur. So if your goal is to start a small business or to actually learn more about the business industry and also entrepreneurship, RISE is actually having our free online program, free entrepreneurship <sighs> program online. So if you are interested and you would like to join, you can register through bit.ly slash rise online. And all the information, if you're interested about the whole program, is available through our Rise Facebook page on and or on our own social media. So if you're interested in entrepreneurship business or you just want to have an extra course or learn more about different things in life. You can always bring a friend, you can always come alone. So don't be afraid to join us for our Rise Online program. And you know, before we go, let's just share a bit more about our next Talkie Talk session. Next will be with Sarah. She's also um, an entrepreneur that's doing art, but her art is specialized and focused towards creating art for families and mothers who want to have more of an artistic journey with their children. So if you're interested, you can sign up for her Talkie Talk session. And with that, um, we can end our session. This is our social media handles. But thank you so much, Maggie, for joining Ooh. us today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and thank you for sharing your little insight about the art industry and how to be an entrepreneur in the art industry. We really enjoy it. Thank you so thank much you so and much. all the best for your business. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.